Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because um, we are, we have, we do so many things, different things. Right. Uh, we are a semi-autonomous body. Um, we are set up by an act of parliament. So we have different registries. We have a business registry that we, it deals with the registration of companies, businessmen, and uh, that is linked with uh, the, the, depa- the director of job insolvency. So we believe if you start your business in a formal way, you should end it in a formal way. So that is what the uh, director of job insolvency does. Okay. Then we have uh, the intellectual property registry mm-hmm. that deals with the registration of intellectual property. That is like trademarks, copyrights, patents, name it. Okay. Then we have the chattels registry that deals, deals with the um, about the mm. uh, yeah, so mm-hmm. then uh, we have the civil registry. Now that is the one that deals with marriages. Yeah. So, um, so particularly anyway, I'm here to talk about the civil registry, okay. which is uh, registration of marriages. And in Uganda, we recognize about five types of marriages. We have uh, the church marriage, the, the famous church marriage, where you go to church and you get married. However, that church must be licensed. So before you go to church, it's not that like any church can wed you. So you need to find out, is that church licensed? Does it have the authority to wed you? Because if it weds you and it doesn't have a license, that marriage in law is null and void, and it cannot be registered. Then uh, we have the civil marriage. Those are the marriages that um, take place from our office for Kampala. Then uh, for other districts, they go to the chief administrative officers. Okay. Uh, that is the, the other marriage which people think uh, is court, like court marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the Islamic marriage for the Muslims, the Nikahs, when they go to the mosque. Then we have the customary marriages. Those are the Kwanjula, the Kohinjira, name it, uh, mm-hmm. depending on uh, the tribes. And then we also have the Hindu marriages. Those are the ones for the... Indians that take place in their temples. So all these marriages, uh, we have the mandate as URSB to register them. So wherever they have taken place, ultimately they have to end up at our office for registration. Okay, um, I think I'll, 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 this is the question. I mean, if I want to get married to someone, I mean, why is it, I thought this is me and this person, why now have to register it with you? Um, uh, uh, the government needs to know how many people are, reg- uh, are married. I mean, uh, our register, they use it for, for planning, national planning. and So when, once you get married, we need to know how many people are married in the country and how many are not. So, and and um, secondly, sometimes when you, have you been, like you want to travel out of the country, you, you're with your spouse, you go to the embassy, you're applying for a visa, and then you say you're married. They will ask you for proof. Your certificate from church or from the subcounty chief for customary marriage or from the mosque for Islamic marriage is not enough. Like the embassy will trust something from the government more. So that is why after you get that certificate from your church or from the mosque or from the sub-county chief, you need to bring it to URSB for registration. Okay. Uh, Administrator General's office, like uh, God forbid uh, one spouse has died and then uh, maybe the, the other spouse wants to apply for letters of, administ- ad- letters of administration. You need to prove that you were married to that person. Otherwise, any other person will just come up and say, this one was my husband, this one was my wife. So they will ask for proof. And the only uh, document they can trust is the one that is from the government, is the one that is from URSB. All right. Um, then uh, tell us through the modalities. For instance, uh, we, I go for uh, Kwanjula, my fiancé introduces me. So um, from there, uh, who gives me, who issues that study? Oh, if after this whole ceremony, do I now immediately come to you uh, to, you know, say I, I had this, so I need a certificate. So what is the process in there? Okay, for uh, the Kwanjula, which uh, in law, or which I may term as the customary, customary marriage, marriage. 
of course it takes different shape and different names depending on the tribe or culture. So here in Uganda it is the Kwanjula. So uh, once you do that customary marriage, you get a certificate from the kingdom, right? Yes. So um, once you get that certificate from the kingdom, you will approach the town clerk or the sub-county chief of the area where that marriage took place. So the town clerk uh, or the sub-county chief of that area is the registrar of customary marriages in that area. So once the town clerk uh, or the sub-county chief is satisfied that the marriage took place, he will issue a certificate of customary marriage and also like issue you a cover letter forwarding you to our office for registration. Okay. Yeah, so um, you have an event uh, coming up uh, this, uh, I think, on uh, Friday. Uh, that's tomorrow. Yep. Um, tell us more about this event because I'm told that you have couples that are, you know, going to exchange vows in an office presided by a registrar of, you know, because there is this bit of, um, and I think you're going to throw light on this, there is this bit where I think a greater bit of our like our side of culture has so much. If you're not wedded in church, it just doesn't you know just doesn't make sense. <laughs> like know. you know. Uh, so uh, how are you maybe trying to make sure people can appreciate that you know you can still do such a kind of marriage and still it's also a marriage because people are like no that is contract marriage. This one sure. is more binding. <laughs> you know. So um, just just a quick one on that. Okay, uh, uh, and, and you have actually put the general perception of uh, how people consider these marriages that, took, that take place in offices. We do wed people on a daily from Monday to Friday at our offices. That is the civil marriage that I talked about. But people think that it is so legalistic, it is so formal, like it is so strict. But uh, Tomorrow is, is we are celebrating Valentine's Day earlier because uh, it, is, uh, it is going to fall on a Sunday okay. and we do not work over the weekend. Mm. So we are celebrating it tomorrow on a Friday. And basically we want to change people's perception about civil marriages. We want to show people that it can still be rosy, it can still be romantic, it can still be all about love as a civil marriage. And uh, Ugandans are, are embracing civil marriages. If you see on social media, uh, the good bit is that we also have uh, the, the special license bit where you want to do a civil marriage and you don't want to come to office, you want to go to gardens, to the hotel. So we can still do that civil marriage from outside. So tomorrow we are we are decorating our office we are giving out gift hampers we just want people when they come they feel like they are not in an office setup we want them to feel like they're in gardens or at the beach or we just want to change that mindset so that they enjoy their day they enjoy civil marriage and we encourage people to because civil marriages are cost effective uh, uh, for for a, for a national you pay about uh, a total of 320,000 to get married. I, I'm not saying that the other marriages are so expensive, no, but... No, they are. That is the reality. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I am not, I am not that, that <laughs> certain that they are. But uh, from the look of things, our marriages are cost effective. So we want to encourage people. Do not think that it is a contract, it is, it is uh, so legalistic, it is so strict and what. No, it is a marriage just like how you walk to church. You can even put on a gown and have maids and have, it is like the difference is just in the word, civil and church. After all, civil marriage and church marriages are all provided for under the same law. So it is basically the other side, it is church, it is the priest, and this side it is a registrar. Yeah, now uh, here it's, uh, you know, we are going to get, get a little bit uh, scholastic in here because uh, I think people, why, in my opinion, is the reason they really try to shun civil marriage is that they really think uh, this one is, for instance, I'll quote the Bible, I mean, what God has joined together, 
uh, no man, so they really believe. So with, with a civil uh, kind of, they, they think government is able to break this, <laughs> or like they just have, there is that bit of security that, and, and well, maybe don't blame people because they really think that, you know, when God is in the atmosphere, then things guaranteed work. Now, when you go this other side, okay, um, they, it may not last. I think it's just a contract, and in law, there's every contract has a loophole. That's what the lawyers say. So, um, I, I, how do you demystify such? Uh, um, I, I will say this again: civil marriages are not contractual. It's not a contract. It is a lifetime commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be dissolved either by a divorce going to court and court pronounces itself on that marriage or if one of them is, is no more. That, those are the only two ways how you can... It's not that you're, you're married for two years and after the two years the contract is, is done. done. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, is, it is a lifetime commitment. Yes. So, and and um, I understand when people think that maybe here God is not involved or, or what, but uh, for example, where you find yourself in a scenario where this is a Muslim and a Christian, and they both want to remain in their faith. No one wants to change to Islamic, no one wants to change to Christianity. But they love each other. Should they not get married? Actually, obviously they have. So civil marriage is the answer. They'll come, do their civil marriage, they'll be legally married, and they will still have their faith. They will still be a, a Muslim, they will still be a Christian. For example, in church they say they, they don't allow divorce. But we know sometimes things don't go right. And uh, where a marriage has reached a point where you can no longer be together, it is okay, you can do a divorce. But remember, church does not allow divorces. And this person wants to wait again. What happens? Should they never? Should they just resign to fate? No. Still, civil marriage is the answer. The answer. They'll come to, to they go to the approach to the chief administrative officer from any district, and for Kampala, they come to our offices and they'll do their civil marriage. All right. Um. Like um, I've been actually being informed that you know these days some churches actually pass ask for the certificate from ERSB to wed couples. Is it, um, is it now so much mandatory for that to take place? Especially now I think that you talked about uh, customary marriages that you know before they now you know, head into wedding, now it, it's becoming now more of a requirement for churches now to wed. Like I said, uh, there are five legally recognized types of marriages in Uganda. Mm -hmm. The church marriage, it can stand on its own as long as the church is licensed. So you do not need to first get a civil marriage from URS before you to do a church marriage, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. The church marriage can stand on its own and it is monogamous in nature, meaning that it is strictly for one man and one woman. Yeah. Civil marriage also can stand on its own. You do not need to first go to church and then later go to the cow come to RSB. No, it can stand on its own and it is also still monogamous in nature. One man, one woman. Then the customary marriage. Now this one is um, potentially polygamous. You can do a customary marriage uh, as a man, you can be introduced by one woman and you say, no, me, this is enough for me. So you can, like you decide to say, I will do, I will only stop at customary marriage and I will remain with that woman. But should you wish to add, nothing stops you if you have only done customary marriage. Okay. Because it is potentially polygamous, meaning you can be introduced by someone else and someone else and someone else as long as you can handle. Okay. But if you have done a customary marriage and then you go ahead and do a church marriage, like I think that is the most common uh, procedure. Mm -hmm. Like you do a kwanjula and then after like a week you go to church. Now, once you do a kwanjula and you go to church, it means that you have converted your potentially polygamous type of marriage to a monogamous type of marriage. Okay. So th the moment you do a church marriage, it bars you. You cannot add any other person. Yeah. So, and, and then we have the Islamic marriage. It, is all, it also stands on its own. Uh, the, 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 the faith allows that uh, a man can marry up to four wives 
and he can still register them with us. And then the Hindu marriage, uh, that is from the Hindu temple for the Indians. So there is nothing like for you to go to church, you have to first bring a certificate for, for, yeah. for civil marriage. No. The only thing we require is that the church must be licensed. It must be licensed to wed people. If it weds people and it is not licensed, it will be doing a disservice to people. It will be doing it legally, illegally. And even those marriages, we cannot register them. We cannot recognize them. Okay. Uh, I think we've done uh, registration of marriages a little bit of justice, and maybe I'll, I'll pick it up again in the tail end. Let's look at uh, these other forms of uh, registration. You talked about intellectual property, uh, property rights, patents, trademarks. I think that's whole in one, in one thing. Um, how does this work? I am a budding law student, and uh, I, I really read this, and it's too technical to the extent that I sometimes <laughs> try to shun away from it. But since you're here, I mean, try to educate us about this. Yes, so um, the, the intellectual properties include um, patents, trademarks, copyrights, uh, industrial designs. So you have uh, written your book. You have uh, sung a song, that th those are the copyrights. You have invented, invented something new, and uh, which is uh, like which can help somewhere. That is your patent, you can register it. You have a mark, like I think Record TV has like a certain mark. Mm -hmm. You can register it to be exclusive for only Record TV so that no any other person can use it. Okay. So if, uh, if in event, uh, that does not happen and someone gets um, how 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 do we how do you handle that if it is for instance I yes okay use record television another because I know for record television it's registered but someone comes up for instance uh, okay they say ignore like in, ignorance is no defense but uh, someone comes up and you know their uh, their brand or trademark is taken in such circumstances what do you do do you so the, the whole instance of registration is to protect to avoid that yes, yes to protect what is yours okay. so if you do not protect it it will be taken away but if you protect it it will be yours and whoever takes it away you have a right to sue, to sue that them. person wow. yes okay uh, then uh, how do uh, I've, I've realized that ursb has uh, been you know doing caravans uh, for I think trying to get one-stop centers or something like that to get uh, people register their businesses and all that. How is it so far, especially now that, you know, the lockdown has really locked down, like, every, everything. How, how have you managed to, you know, get uh, such services still available uh, to people? Uh, our services are online, yeah. uh, most of them. So uh, you go to our website, there are steps that you follow you want to for example register a business name you fill a form on the on the on online and then you just submit you want to register a company you fill online and you submit and then you get notifications when the things are ready and then you just come to pick okay. the same applies to ip the same applies to marriages the same applies to all the services that we offer uh, Particularly, uh, uh, marriages like uh, the directorate that I'm in, people like you will send in your application to get married. You send in all the requirements because we have uh, the requirements that we, we ask for. We process your application if everything is in order. We give you the tentative date for you to come for your marriage. Okay. We'll see you only on that day because, I mean, that is what... Uh, this situation has put us in. But our services have not been tampered with. We are continuing smoothly. All right, so uh, for those that are not tech savvy, is there any option that, that, are not? that are not tech savvy, like technology savvy, like you, you, the computer, not computer literate? Because you know, with these online platforms, you know, we tend to imagine that uh, you know, everyone just knows you know, these details. Are they still okay to walk right physically into uh, URSB offices and just try to get themselves registered? Yes. The hard way. Yes, I would say. but we try as much as possible to limit uh, 
interaction because yeah. of the pandemic. Yes. Yes. So yeah, because these these are people I've realized. Uh, I was I hosted a lady from uh, Uganda Revenue Authority, and I was asking about those issues. There are people that really are not so illiterate about these things, True. and people like for instance marriages. I mean. People out there do not even know that you have to register. They will just stop at having fun at the party. And even after the honeymoon, they, they, they just don't have that, you know, that afterthought. But I think I will pick up this discussion, I think, later. Let's okay. just take a quick commercial break and we return. Let's take a quick commercial break right now. We return. The discussion continues. Please stay tuned. For choosing MTN, use MTN Mobile Money, Bandos, or other services to get sent you points. The more you use, the more sent you points you get. We look forward to many more years together. Thank you. It's not worthy just because instead of love, they focus on materialistic things. It's not about giving gifts as everyone would think. They can come to your home. Mm. I try to clean up your home. Can gift someone just because I want something in return. It doesn't give meaning, making it not worth. When God is creating the earth, he, he was full of love and he created this world with love. So I think it's worth celebrating. Let this one day be a treat for your friends. Why don't you celebrate love to the main commandments of Jesus? We love one another. Mm. Valentine is not worthy of celebration. People are twisting the meaning. Mm. Why do we wait for one day to celebrate love? Uh, instead of people having Valentine's Day, uh, let's begin celebrating our anniversaries, even if it's 10 years. <laughs> This weekend on Urban Square.
morning once again and welcome back from that quick commercial break. We're talking matters, marriage, registration of marriage, and I'm having us, uh, Mariam Atwini, uh, Registrar of Marriages from the Civil Directorate of Uganda Registration Services Bureau. You know, uh, a body mandated by law to do all the registration of, you know, she kind of hinted earlier on about the services of URSB, you know, re getting your companies registered, you know, it's not good to have an entity uh, not known to government. Uh, actually, this also serves as a way of empowering uh, businesses economically by having them legally registered by government. Um, Mariam, this morning, I pick it up from where, but I think you pick it up with this from this point. Uh, what are the requirements for, you know, one to have their marriage? registered uh, or maybe you will just run us through the process because um, I'll begin I think later on someone off record when you had gone to the break was talking about <laughs> you do background checks for marriages uh, I mean the bulwark of the process is you know what we really need to hear from you Mary. okay uh, for 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 civil marriages uh, like I said uh, we we do celebrate marriages from URSB uh, we do it on behalf of the Registrar General as registrars of marriages. So for their procedures, when, when you come in that you want to get married, there are uh, a list of requirements that we need from you. We will need your identification. Uh, if, you're, if you're a Ugandan, we need your ID or passport. If you're a foreigner, we do wait foreigners, by the way. If you or if you have your muzungu, you can don't mm. fear. <laughs> so if you're a foreigner, you bring your passport. Uh, you must of course have a valid visa or a work permit or send anything to show that you're in the country legally. Then uh, we do require for an LC letter from where you stay. Like I said, for Kampala, it is our mandate. Outside Kampala, it is the cow's mandate. So we need an LC letter to be sure that you're within our jurisdiction. And, and even the requirements that we ask at URSB are the same that the cows ask. And then uh, if you're a divorcee, we require you to have a divorce decree to be sure that the divorce was completed. If you're a widow or a widower, we require you to have a death certificate for the spouse who passed on. Then. Uh, we, uh, you have to identify two witnesses. We cannot do it in private. We need witnesses. So you, like, you identify two witnesses, uh, possibly also need their identification. And then there is, uh, there, there are, there is a, a, a document called uh, the marriage affidavit that is, is uh, sworn before the magistrate or the registrar or the commissioner for oaths. So in that document, you commit yourself and you tell us that you are above the age of 18 because uh, the ID may show, but then uh, we also need you to commit yourself so that if you lie, you're held responsible. So you, in that document, you tell us that you're above the age of 18, that you're not related in any way with the person that you're going to marry. This can either by blood or by clan. Like here in Uganda, you cannot, and I think it also in other tribes, you cannot get married to a person of your same clan because you're considered to be related. So you in uh, in, in our tribe, it's uh, which tribe is that? Um, I am a Mnyankole too, but you're lying. If you <laughs> if you're of the same clan, it is an abomination. You can't get married. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah. in in that document, you have to say that you you commit or swear to us that you're not related and then uh, that you freely give your consent. No one is forcing you, you're just doing it freely. So uh, those are the requirements, uh, those documents. As of now, once you have all these documents put together, you fill a notice form which is provided on our, on our website and that notice is the one that will run for 21 days. Now during those 21 days, we put you on our notice board. We have the physical notice board and our electronic notice board, which can be accessed through our website. So during those 21 days, if someone comes up and say no, 
uh, this person uh, is, 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 is my husband or this person is my wife, cannot get married to another person, they will put a caveat. And once they put a caveat, now that is a matter for court to determine. We pull out until court has decided. So if the 21 days are over and no one challenged, then you get married. You have 90 days within which to get married. And then you're good to go. We, you come after the 21 days, you come to RSB. Now, for example, the people who are coming tomorrow, meaning that they applied uh, 21 days ago. So their marriage is falling due tomorrow. Okay. So once you come, uh, the process takes about at most 15 minutes, and then you leave your RSB with your certificate, legally married. married. Now, for our marriages at URSB, the civil marriages, they are registered automatically because you're doing it there. Now, we are not saying that you first go and then you come back to register. But the moment we give you the certificate, it means that everything has been done, you're registered. For church marriages, it is the duty of the church. Uh, for example, if you get married from All Saints Church, it is the duty of All Saints to register your marriage. Mm. But should All Saints delay, and maybe you have an urgent matter, uh, maybe you want to fly out of the country with your wife, you want to apply for something and they are requiring for proof, you can do it yourself. You go to the church where I got married from, you get a cover letter where the church is saying, yes, this marriage took place from our church, and then uh, you attach your IDs and you bring it yourself and we register it. Okay. Customary marriage, like I said, uh, the sub-county chief or the town clerk is the one who issues the certificate, then gives you also a cover letter and says, yes, these people are good to go. You can register them. Uh, the Hindu, still, uh, the person in charge of the temple, writes a cover letter. Uh, you attach your IDs and a copy of the certificate, and we register. Same applies to Islamic. Uh, the mosque in uh, Chibuli or Old Kampala uh, gives you a cover letter and a copy of the certificate, plus your IDs, and we register them. That is if they have delayed to register, because ideally it is the duty of the church, of the mosque, of the temple, to register those marriages. Okay, um, so, well, I think we'll get back to the event tomorrow, uh, which uh, actually I think is the climax for, for all this. Um, what, uh, what do you intend to, you know, to offer us? Because uh, personally, Record TV will be there to you know, cover the event. Okay, so were you there last year? No, I wasn't. Oh, mm -hmm. you missed. So we'll be having a red carpet. Okay. We decorate our offices right from the ground floor. So you reach the whole building, you see that the ambience is really love, romance, uh, marriage, everything is rosy. So we'll be having a red carpet. We are going to decorate our offices. The marriage room, which usually is like so office, it will be decorated, flowers, what? Um, the couples for tomorrow, uh, those, most of them have been contacted. They know what, we are, what is going to be happening. Let them feel free. They can put on their gowns. They can put on, like, carry flowers. Do, let them just feel at home. They know, like, tomorrow is their day. We are just celebrating love. And uh, it so happens that actually they are getting married on the day when we are celebrating love. Like I said, we are doing it tomorrow, the 12th, because uh, 14th is falling on a Sunday, Sunday and yeah. we don't work on Sunday. So that's why we decided to do it on the 12th. So it will be really um, beautiful. Okay. So if you're not in a hurry, you can really time that time of the year. But like I said, uh, civil marriages, we are trying to take away this perception from people to think that it is a contract, it is so legalistic, it is so... There is no difference between a civil marriage and a church marriage in terms of commitment or authenticity or anything. It is just that the procedure is different and the forum, maybe the other one goes to church and this one goes to an office. But there is no difference. Civil marriages are not contractual. It is a lifetime commitment. It can only be dissolved by going to court and you get a divorce or by death. So it is also till death do us part or till oh, yeah. death okay. or till divorce do us part. Okay. 
Okay. So it's not contractual. Okay, uh, you, you, you made it like crystal clear. Uh, but, uh, you know, that whole bit, does this, I think it only happens this time of the year. I mean, because I, you know, when you try to, you, you're trying to debunk, you know, the fact that, you know, because, you know, with church marriages, you have the leverage of, you know, coming with a fleet of cars and, you know, that, you know, that whole bit of church marriages. And so uh, does this only happen in Feb as we're going to Valentine's Day or it can, you know, happen on a day? What if my marriage falls like on a walking day <laughs> and can I really come with all that fleet? Okay. At yours for marriage, uh, and you know, and I don't cause some sort of destruction with work going on at, at, at the offices. It's only because we are just limited uh, because of space, but otherwise, we'll do it every other day that we have marriages at office. But we are just limited. But like I said, uh, should you not want to do it from our offices, mm -hmm. you can apply for a special license to gazette a place. Take, for example, you want to get married from Serena Chigo. I think uh, you, maybe if you haven't, but we have celebrated marriages from Serena, from Sheraton, from Munyonyo, from it is very simple. The couple intending to marry, they apply for a special license to gazette that place specifically for that marriage. That license is granted by the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, but it is through our office. So the application is brought to our office, and at the end of the day, it will be signed by the Minister. So once the Minister has granted, we, URSB, will come to you at your venue and celebrate your marriage from there. So you can still, you see, you can still make civil marriage look fancy, nice, outside office. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, we are just limited because of space, but we'll do it every day, every other day. Okay, now when you talk about uh, licensing special places, I've seen, I don't know, um, if, for instance, I don't want to get married in some sort of physical church building, Mm. and I want my church marriage to take place somewhere else. Mm. Do I again have to apply for that special yeah. license for the church? It's not only limited to civil. Yes, the special license is not limited to civil. Okay. You know, like I said, civil marriage and church marriage are provided for under the same law. Okay. So they are so like sister and brother, or sisters. Yeah. So. Even if you want to do a church marriage and you want your pastor or your reverend or your father to wed you from the beach, from the gardens, from the hotel, you can still apply for a special license. Then the church that is going to wed you still must be licensed. Then uh, the, the church will commit itself. In your application, it will commit itself and say, yes, we are going to wed this, this couple and we are licensed to wait couples. So this license is paid for, it is an extra fee, it is paid for at only 300,000 shillings. Wow. 300,000, okay. 300,000 shillings. Okay. Uh, so the, the couple makes uh, an application to the minister through the Registrar General asking uh, for a place, say Munyonyo Serena, to be gazetted for their wedding because by the time they make the application, they already have a date in mind. So they say, we are getting married on such and such a date. We'd like to get married from this place. You give your reasons. Maybe you want all your family members to be there. You, you don't want to be in, in the office setup. Sometimes, you know, like our offices are on the fourth floor. Maybe you have your el uh, parents who are so elderly and cannot make it and you want to take them to a place where they can feel comfortable. So you give your reasons uh, by way of an affidavit, you attach it, and um, the minister will grant. He has the discretion, but in mm -hmm. most cases, he grants the application. And then we find you at your venue, and you, we marry you if it is a civil marriage. If it is a church marriage, you take the license to the church, and then your pastor will marry you, or the priest, or the reverend. Okay, um, I think as we uh, you know, uh, winding up this discussion, any important footnotes that you really need the public to know about URSB and the Directorate of uh, Civil Registration, yes. 
Uh, one thing I'm going to emphasize is uh, please, p the, the public should always search on the church that they are going to get married from. You know, like doing your church marriage, you make the vows, you do the reception, and at the end of the day, you come to register a marriage at your SB and they tell you, no, we can't. It is null and void because the church was never licensed. So please, before you take that step, to book a day, to book a date. Simple, just come to your RSB, say I want to search on this church, I want to know if it is licensed to wait. Or ask the church, or visit our website. We even have a list of licensed churches on our website and check if the church is licensed. Then if it is licensed, you know you're safe, you know you're good to go. Instead of getting married and then later they tell you no, it can't happen. And um, then again, uh, I encourage people to register. So, like almost every other weekend, we we have customary marriages here and there. So sometimes we do these customary marriages, and then maybe we are constrained financially. We say let's just wait for like a year or two as we organize finances to do the church wedding. So once you do that customary marriage, even if you're going to wait for a year come and register it. You never know what will happen in that period. But if you have a registered customary marriage certificate, it is conclusive evidence that you got married at that point. And then later when you convert it, you upgrade to the church marriage certificate. Because like I said, the customary marriage certificate, customary marriage itself is potentially polygamous. So meaning that it can not be between one, two people. The man may add on and add on and add on. So we are encouraging people, once you do your customary marriages, come and register. Even if you're waiting, even if you're going to do to convert, but come and register. I at least have something in the meantime. And then um, for churches, we are encouraging them. We have a system uh, for, for filing marriage returns. Those marriages that have taken place, we call them returns. So normally, before all this, they used to bring them physically to our offices. But now we have a system, an online system. A church can, can apply for an account, and then they just register their marriages from the, from the comfort of their offices at churches, and then we, re, we receive them at URSB without them moving at, from their churches to URSB. So they can get accounts. Uh, we train them on how to use the system, and then they file their returns. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, but one that has just dropped in my mind right now, what does it take for a church to be licensed to carry out marriages? Okay, for, for a church to be licensed, one, um, the, okay, when they make the application, still the, 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 the license is granted by the minister. But again, it is through our office. It is through the Registrar General and then to the Minister. So they make an application. In the application, they specify which denomination they are. Are they Anglican? Are they Catholic? Are they Pentecostal? Are they Orthodox? So they specify which denomination. They tell us the location where the, the church is. If, the, if it is within Kampala, we usually conduct an inspection to be sure that it actually exists. If it is outside Kampala, it is the duty of the cow. So by the time the church makes an application, they attach they, they search the inspection report from the cow's office. I, we usually and strongly advise that it, it, it should be a permanent building, like because the license is given for a place. So if it is like a temporary building, they may be there. We have given them a license here or at, uh, in Kamocha, and then tomorrow you hear that they have shifted again to, let's say, Ntinda. And yet the license was given for the place in Kamocha. So we strongly advise and uh, usually recommend that it should be a permanent building. Uh, then um, the, 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 in the letter, they proposed the, the, the ministers, the church ministers that will be celebrating. They attach their IDs and their qualifications. 
and then um, that license is 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 a one-off, by the way, and it is granted at two hundred thousand shillings. Okay. At the end of the day, things are not as expensive as these as they look to be. You yes. know, it's it's pretty interesting. But thank you so much for creating time, uh, coming to you know, uh, educate us about this. Some some of these are quite an eye opener, especially in such a fledgling economy. Yet you know, in, <laughs> you know, uh, if we if we have uh, cost effective, just as you said in your own words, cost effective mm -hmm. measures, then I think that uh, that does it for us. Thank you so much, Madam Maria Matwine. Okay. Uh, lastly, okay. sorry, yeah. I wanted to to give out our contacts okay. uh, for any inquiries. Uh, maybe there are people who had questions while they were listening to me, but they can send, they can call toll free. This is the number 0800100006. 0800100006. We have a WhatsApp number. Uh, you can send a WhatsApp message. It is on 0712448448. 0712-448-448. Then we, uh, our website uh, is www.urisb.go.ug. Then specifically for marriages, if you have any inquiry, any maybe you want to send in your application, you send to marriages, the word marriages, at urisb.go.ug. All right, thank you so much, um, Madam Maria Martini, for, you know, for this wonderful you know eye-opening information about marriage yeah thank you so much well uh we take a quick commercial break uh, but the day breaker continues and uh, this morning uh we are still you know we are still discussing events of the week but we are we've been discussing uh, marriages and registration of marriages in this segment but let's uh, go for a break next is my colleague uh, thomas tarima coming in to discuss politics and security in Uganda with George Fred Kajimo, who is the guest, please stay here.